And once again, we're here with Michael Cranford, <laughs> Fibonacci, <laughs> and a lot of discussion about that. I mean, science has really become a bit of a joke. There's a lot going on in, in, in the natural world that science doesn't allow us to participate in. Yeah. People are, are, are waking up and becoming aware. What science doesn't do is recognize nature's functions. The, the texture of the surface is really what creates the, the energy, the shape, the texture, the form. That what Michael's talking about when he's talking about, um, uh, you know, textures and forms, um, working with air and water, creating these eddies of, of free energy, these eddies of oxy you know, oxygen, well, this is the power of, quote, structured water. The movement and the memory of the water is very dependent on the surface that it flows by. So therefore, the surface creates the flow of energy, the surface and the texture. And, you know, it's, it's the texture and the form of our arteries and veins that do structure the water in, that's in our blood, within us. Water, the fact that water has memory, and water is so much more than we've been led to, that, again, Traditional mainstream science doesn't ask the right questions, and you know, the forest itself is an intelligent organism, and as is every tree and plant and flower. You know, a river's immune system is just like ours. The river feeds the planet's environment like our blood feeds our bodies with oxygen and nutrients. And that's where the life begins, is at that place where the eddies are. Now, see, that fascinates me. There's a complexity to this that most of you are not going to ever learn this in our science classes in school. How do these different vortices play into what you're talking about? You know. So I'm going to use the textures and shapes of a creek bed to begin levitating water. I'm taking all my old microwaves, all my own hard drives, and I'm pulling the radium magnet out and in my Fibonacci creek bed that I'm building underneath the pool that will levitate water. It's in the shape of a river, it includes the little sandbar, the little eddy. That when water flows through, it's, it's, it's mimicking the flow of a river, right? Vortices and so the currents and the directions and the flow flow through the valves yeah. that creates the lift, right? That you're talking about. And then this has the, this has the effect of genuinely enlivening the water. And I'm trying to take the the 8,500 gallons of weight of the water in the pool, create an airspace under the pool, and the weight of the water will actually levitate the water up. And this is like a siphon. You, you capture energy, so it does become a sort of perpetual motion. The pool will actually create some energy for the house. Now, the pool will function much better on a full moon night than it will during a hot summer day. Complicated. The solutions can be really quite simple. Um, you know, getting rid of as much squ squaring off in your home as possible, placing plants into corners was one thing you said, Michael, rearranging yeah. your furniture so things move in a more circular or oval flow. How our architecture, you know, square buildings and the ways roads, dams, or other constructions work against the uh, natural laws of nature. And we live in square homes with square furniture with square appliances and square refrigerators and square windows and doors and square garages and square cars. And there's nothing in nature that's square. But yet it seems to be the human's favorite shape. And you find, you find all kinds of applications for Fibonacci when you wrap your head around how simple and easy it is to understand. You don't need a bunch of computer devices. You don't need a, a degree in rocket science, but you do need a degree in nature. You can tap into it if you understand its simplicity. Yeah. Copying nature, awesome. mimicking nature duplicating its functions. The functions right. are duplicated based on the textures, the shapes, and the forms. This is the way the law of attraction works. Wow. Wow.